of this video is to provide you with knowledge of J.D. Salinger's life and the world he lived in. This knowledge will allow you to have a richer understanding of his novel, Catcher in the Rye, when you read it. J.D. Salinger, Jerome David Salinger, was born in 1919 in New York. Salinger's parents were Sol, a Jewish man who sold kosher cheese, and Miriam, who converted to Judaism for her husband. Salinger had one sibling, Doris, who was his older sister. In a 1953 interview for a high school newspaper, Salinger admitted The Catcher in the Rye was sort of autobiographical, explaining my boyhood was very much the same as that of the boy in the book. It was a great relief telling people about it. As a youth, Salinger attended public schools before enrolling at McBurney, a private school. At McBurney, he wrote in the school newspaper and joined the school fencing team. However, Salinger had a difficult time with schoolwork and fitting in and called himself Jerry in an attempt to conform. Due to academic failure, he was eventually asked to leave the school. Salinger was then enrolled at Valley Forge Military Academy, which practiced strict discipline. Salinger attended university, however, he never completed a course. During this period of his life, Francis Glassmoyer, a friend, described Salinger as a very funny boy who talked exactly like Holden. In 1942, Salinger was beginning to establish himself as a published writer. However, his writing career was interrupted when he was drafted into the army. On June 6, 1944, Salinger was a member of the Counterintelligence Corps that landed on Utah Beach as part of the D-Day landing. Salinger was involved in the Battle of Hurtgen, which was viewed as one of the greatest Allied debacles of the war. At Hurtgen, Salinger witnessed the horrors and ravages of war. Salinger's intelligence duties meant that he had to personally confront the horrors of the Holocaust. He entered the Dachau concentration camp, and he later told his daughter, you could live a lifetime and never get the smell of burning flesh out of your nose. Salinger's wartime experiences would lead to a mental breakdown in 1945, and he admitted himself into a mental hospital. In a short story that Salinger wrote during the Battle of Hurtgen, the main character, who shared Salinger's army number, returns to New York on the verge of a nervous collapse. Everything reminds him of the war. Everything makes him break into tears. But the thing that he says that is really terrible is the way you want to tell civilians these things. He takes a vow to never reveal them. When Salinger returned home to America, A.E. Hotchner, the writer, described him as Dow. In 1955, Salinger married Claire Douglas, and the couple had two children, Margaret and Matthew. Salinger and Claire divorced in 1967. During his withdrawal from society, Salinger wrote religiously, but published rarely. He published his final original work in 1965. In a rare interview in 1974, he explained, There is a marvellous peace in not publishing. I like to write. I love to write, but I write for myself and my own pleasure. Salinger gave his last interview in 1980. Today, Salinger is almost as celebrated for his extreme privacy as he is for his writing. Salinger spent more than 40 years as a mysterious recluse. J.D. Salinger died in 2010. After World War II, there was a general confidence that the future held nothing but peace and prosperity. Rates of employment and inflation were low, and wages were high. Now, you might just want to pause as we go through these clips, just to look at the images, because they are quite revealing about life in the 1950s. Commercialism in the 1950s. The variety and availability of consumer goods expanded along with the economy. Suddenly, the middle class had more money to spend and more things to spend it on. As a result, advertising exploded. However, critics equated commercialism with conformity. Gender in the 1950s. In the 1950s, there were a number of magazine articles and advice books that encouraged women to leave the war workforce and embrace their roles as wives and mothers. These included... Don't be afraid to marry young. Cooking to me is poetry. And the inflammatory femininity begins at home. Civil rights in the 1950s. In the 1950s, the struggle against racism and segregation entered the mainstream. In 1954, the Supreme Court ruled that separate educational facilities for black children were inherently unequal. Many Americans in the South resisted this ruling and used violence and intimidation to prevent blacks from asserting their rights. The Cold War in the 1950s. The tension between the USA and the Soviet Union, known as the Cold War, was the US attempt to stop the spread of communism, which the US believed threatened democracy and capitalism. The idea that communism needed to be contained by diplomacy or force influenced American foreign policy for decades. 
Many Americans worried that communists or subversives could destroy America from the inside. During the 1950s, African Americans and white Americans started to integrate more. Rock and roll was the mixture of rhythm and blues, the music of the two cultures. The lyrics contained sexual connotations and the infectious music encouraged dancing. Many parents did not like rock and roll because they thought it caused juvenile delinquency. Therefore, rock and roll became linked to youth rebellion. In The Catcher in the Rye, Holden uses the language of the adolescent, swearing, and he is fascinated with sex. Today, some people idealise the 1950s as a time of virtue and moral purity. These people believe that the period celebrated the importance of family, and there are popularised images that capture this feeling. The father mowing the lawn, the wife vacuuming in high heels, and children playing in the backyard. However, Miriam Ruman suggests that beneath America's veneer of moral triumph, lay deep-seated anxieties surrounding shifting gender roles, economic uncertainties, and racial tensions. In particular, there was a belief that sexual immorality would lead to the breakdown of the country's delicate social fabric. The Catcher in the Rye and the 1950s The Catcher in the Rye captures the atmosphere of anxiety and repression of the 1950s. The novel was considered to be extremely controversial, and a number of schools banned it. The Christian Science Monitor concluded that the novel was not fit for children to read, and Holden Caulfield was preposterous, profane, and pathetic beyond belief. Timothy Aubrey believes that The Catcher in the Rye serves as a resonant expression of alienation from a society that is corrupt or corrupting. The Catcher in the Rye, The Dark Side. The Catcher in the Rye is associated with the assassination of John Lennon, the Beatle. Mark David Chapman, the man who assassinated John Lennon, was found reading a copy of the novel on the night he murdered Lennon. During his trial, he read the passage from the book where Holden tells his sister Phoebe that he wants to be the catcher in the rye. The key points to consider. Like Holden, Caulfield, Salinger struggled at school. Salinger fought in World War II, which changed him. He came back a dour man. Salinger became reclusive, which is a desire that Holden Caulfield expressed. Salinger once referred to The Catcher on the Rye as a spiritual autobiography. The 1950s juxtaposed financial optimism and conflict. Beneath the veneer of morality, society was anxious and repressed. Increased commercialism led to increased conformity. Holden Caulfield became a symbol for unfettered individualism that challenged cultural oppression. <laughs>